Hello and welcome to today's webinar. This is how to make entering offerings the easiest part of your week using Church 360 members. My name is Peter Frank. I'm the Senior Manager of Marketing Technology here at Concordia Publishing House. And one of my main responsibilities is to lead the Concordia Technology Solutions team. Now that team has a lot of different things that goes on between product development and testing and support and marketing and sales. I work with all of the different teams. Um, I lead our marketing and sales team. And so I'm used to talking about things quite a bit. I work directly with our developers on a regular basis talking about the different features. So I get kind of excited about talking about Church 360 members and I can really talk about it all day, which I know you don't all have all day to talk about this. And that's why Ken Olemeyer's on the line. Ken is also a senior manager of marketing here at CPH and his job's a little bit different than mine. He goes out and meets with church workers directly face to face when we are not in social distancing times. Now he's talking with them and emailing them and getting stories about how our customers are using our products and that's why he's here today so he'll join us in just a few minutes over the video and audio but before we do that i've got a few housekeeping items for you today we're planning about 50 minutes for presentation now we may go a little bit over that if we've got a lot to talk about and don't have a lot of questions but i do want to leave some time at the end for question and answer so we've set aside about 10 minutes for that i'm always okay going a little over if we need to but we'll see how it goes We'll know because I'm asking you to ask questions throughout. There is no reason to wait till those last 10 minutes to ask your questions for us. While Ken's presenting, I'll be on the line answering those questions in the chat. And if they're appropriate for everybody, I'll share the answers with the entire group. And if they're appropriate just for you, you'll get a private message back from me. And then as we get into that Q&A time, I'll take over the mic and, and we'll talk through some of those. So feel free to put those in at any time. Now we are recording this webinar and that's one of the most common questions we get. We'll be sharing this webinar, but not as quickly as normal. Typically I try to get it out within the first 24 hours. Well, tomorrow is a holiday for us here at Concordia Publishing House, so we will not be in the office. So you can expect that email from me sometime on Monday, but you'll be able to watch it at your convenience after Monday and show it with anybody else in your church who might benefit from that. A little bit about us, Concordia Technology Solutions is a different name than Concordia Publishing House, but we are one and the same. We are the church administration division of Concordia Publishing House, and we've been developing software for churches since 1984. That is a long time, and when you think about what technology was like back then, it's a little bit different than now. You know, Things like these, cell phones, were not even crossing our minds as a possibility. You know, Not even for phone calls, much less actually doing church management on your phone. So things have changed a lot. Our customers have changed, our technology have changed, but we have been here the whole way changing with you, providing those tools that aid you in ministry, those technology tools. So I always make a few assumptions about who is joining us before we have these webinars. And I'm gonna share a few of those with you right now, just so you know if you're kind of in the right place or at least you know how we're gonna be presenting it, what standpoint we're looking at it from. So the first thing is I'm assuming that you work in the church office. That's a pretty safe assumption, but I don't necessarily mean full-time employment in the church office, just that you serve in that way. The things that we're gonna be showing today, while we'll do a broad overview of Church 360 members, we're gonna really focus on that offerings aspect of that. And that's typically done in the church office, either by a paid staff or by a volunteer. So if that's what you're doing, great. Uh, if not, maybe you enter the offerings from home. Well, that, think of that like the extended church office. Next, I'm assuming that your church, or even you specifically, track more than just offerings. You see, that's one of the great things about Church 360 members is that offerings is one aspect of it, but it helps to fill out a more complete picture of your members and your visitors as a whole, tied in with things like attendance and pastoral visits and tags, you know, information about those members. Offerings is certainly a very important part of that, but it's just one part of the who that person is. And then finally, I think this is probably a safe assumption, I'm assuming that you would like to minimize data entry. There are not a lot of people who love to do data entry. We've got some positions here at the publishing house where it's mostly data entry, and that can be a little bit boring. So we're always trying to find ways 
to enter data more efficiently, not because it's a bad thing, there's a lot of value in having that data, but because it's how you use the data that is even more valuable. Well, before we get into the presentation, I'd love to lo know a little bit about who's here today. We've got a good group, even on a holiday week, so thanks so much for being here. I'm gonna ask you a question over our poll. This question is, what your role in the church is. And this is your primary role. We know you wear a lot of hats in the church. Everybody who works or serves in a church office tends to wear a lot of hats. Which one best describes you? I know we've had some trouble before with people using this interface, so if you can't select an option, don't feel bad. Um, you can always put a note in the chat and let us know what your role is. And um, again, it's the one that best describes you, especially if you're wearing multiple hats. We'll give it a few more seconds, and um, then I'll just read back the answers to you. All right, we are just about there. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that poll. It looks like about 50% are in that financial manager role, and we've got 38% as administrators, and then 13% as pastors. And we'll see that a lot. Um, that's kind of what I was expected, probably a little bit more in the financial management role than I would have thought, because a lot of times the financial managers are doing the back-end things, more of the outgoing expenses, like the general ledger. But we'll often see pastors in smaller congregations, typically the pastor has to do a lot of different things, or is the one recommending technology. So that's really aligns well with our expectations. So thank you so much for answering that question. Let's go on and talk briefly about what Church 360 members is. If you are unfamiliar with Church 360 members at all, well, it's part of the Church 360 suite. We call it complete church management at 360 degrees, and it's not just members. We also have Church 360 Unite, which is our church website builder that allows you to have a really comprehensive online presence on your website. We're going to talk about that on Monday if you're interested. If you are, put a note in the chat. I'll send you the link, or you can visit our website, 360unite.com. Now, Church 360 Ledger is our church finance software. That's that other end that I was just talking about, your chart of accounts, your general ledger, the money that's going out, the bills that you pay, your budget, all of those kind of things. Today, we're talking about money coming in and really how it connects with the people of your church. We're not going to be talking about making deposits and tracking credits and debits. We're going to be talking about things like contribution statements and how you should track this so that you can provide those giving statements to your members. So we won't really touch on Unite and Ledger at all today. Our focus is on Church 360 members. And we call this one really the, the true church management software, although the entire suite fits within that realm. Church 360 members focuses first and foremost on people. That's why we have that name. That's why we have that icon as the part of the logo. But we also look at things that members do, such as attend events and give offerings or contributions. So those are all different data points, but they point back to people. And that's one of our goals. In fact, as we look at how we develop Church 360 members, our goal has been to focus on people first and foremost. There is a lot of data points. And if we look at these only as data, and, and I'm talking about we at CTS, our programmers, our testers, our support techs, it's really easy to get into this mode of, well, these, the, this is all just data and databases that we display on the screen. Well, I know in the church office, it can kind of seem like that too. If all you're doing is typing and you're not talking with people, well, that seems like data. So I think it's important for all of us. We do this here, but I know you do that as well, is to focus on the fact that all of this data points back to people. Now, this data is important, but it's only important as we use it. And that's why we try to bring data to light within Church 360 members. You'll see this throughout our different reports and our charts, a little bit of pieces of information here and there, you know, last time given, something like that. Those are the kind of things where we want to just draw your attention to this data as it's helpful. Make it feel less like a database and more like informational hints of things that you should maybe consider looking at. Now, we hope you can use this information and turn it into insight. We cannot give you insight into the lives of your members, but we can display the data in such a way that you can interpret it. You know, software cannot tell what's going on in a person's life, but it can point to some clues. And that's what we hope to do with Church 360 members. Now, another key part of our development is giving access where and how you need it. 
And so I mentioned before, you might be entering offerings from home. Well, that's really just an extension of the church office that happens to be in your living room. You might only be entering offerings. You may not be touching the people records or the attendance records. That's a key part of today's technology is allowing you to do exactly what you need to do when and where you need to do it. And so through our different permission roles, through our different screens, you know, it works great on a tablet. Many of the screens are optimized for mobile devices, things that you might want to do on your phone. Now today we're talking about offering entry. That's a key thing that you're going to want to have a keyboard for, a desktop or a laptop and a keyboard because there is data entry in that. And we've optimized it as best as we can, but you can't get around the fact that it's truly data entry. So we try to provide the right access, again, where and how you need it. Finally, we provide the building blocks, not the blueprint. Every church does things differently, and we understand that. And for most things, there's not a right way of doing it. Now, there's some things that you must do, like provide contribution statements to your members. But we provide flexibility, and you'll see that as we talk about things like funds, especially as we look at grouping people. There's a lot of flexibility here where you get to kind of set those rules and how it operates. So we, again, we provide those building blocks for you to set it up in the way that works best for your church. We're not giving you a blueprint that you must follow and do it exactly like every other church does it. So a few other things that are common questions that I just like to address right now before they come up. First off, like I mentioned, there is a mobile accessible portion of Church 360 members. And in fact, there's an app that you can go and download in the App Store. It's free with your subscription. You don't have to pay any extra for it. It's only valuable to the people who use it because if you don't have the data there, there's nothing to look at. We do provide data conversions from your existing platform, including offerings. Now, there's additional fees that go with that, and we're not going to talk about that too much today, although I can answer that if you're curious. Um, they are The data conversion coming from other sources is done in a very manual effort by our team, and we work with you directly to make sure it looks okay. So that's a common question. I like to answer that right away. There are no limits on our users. Regardless of what plan, you can have as many users as you need because we know every church, again, is very different and you might have a lot of volunteers but very few staff people. Or maybe it's the reverse. You've got a couple full-time staff people but no volunteers and so you need those people to have that full access. So no limit on that and we do provide a lot of support and training. You can access our support team through the phones, through emails, through our help center. We have digital and printed training manuals for Church 360 members, regular webinars. There's all sorts of ways to get that help and training. All right, so the outline for today that Ken's going to be walking us through give a brief overview of the software. He's gonna walk you through the interface, talk about some of the key highlights. And I'll look briefly at adding events and attendance, things that are important, you know, as you go about collecting offerings, you wanna know some of these things. So we're not gonna spend a lot of time on that. He's also gonna show you how to add new contributors, also known as people, <laughs> people who give gifts. He'll show you that side of things because the people portion of members is really its heart of the software. Then he'll be spending time showing you how to enter offerings, both physical offerings that you might get from an envelope or electronic offerings that you want to sync with your Church360 members account. And then finally, we'll get into the question and answers, and I'll jump back on the line answering any of those questions that you put in the chat. And again, remember, if you have questions, go ahead and enter them in as you're thinking about them. There's no reason to wait to the Q&A to type them in. Type them in, and I'll answer them as kind of like a cue, and we'll definitely get all of them in that Q&A period. All right. Well, it is my great pleasure to introduce Ken Olemeyer. Ken, again, is a senior manager of marketing here at Concordia Publishing House. He's got an extensive background of working in marketing and advertising and understanding people, understanding different audiences. And that's what he does on a day-to-day -day basis now. He works with our churches and our church workers, our customers, collecting information, hearing those stories and coming back and retelling those stories to the rest of the team so that all of us at CPH can have a better idea of who our customers are and how they use our products. So Ken, thank you so much for being here. I am so happy that you can present this information today and it's all yours, take it away. Oh, thank you, Peter. What a great introduction, thank you. Um, as Peter said, uh, first of all, we appreciate all of you taking the time out today to do this. Uh, for those of you who are watching this later uh, on the tape, you know, you're right before a holiday, so I really do appreciate you taking some time out. Um, 
one of the things I hope to do on here is really spark a few ideas because we're gonna be talking about a lot of different things. So don't forget, if you have questions or if you have anything pops into your head, put it into the chat. As Peter mentioned, my name is Ken Olemeyer. I'm a senior marketing manager here at Concordia Publishing House. Peter talked a little bit about my job, but I really have a wonderful job. I love it. I get to get out and meet with our pastors and our teachers, our DCEs, our church administrators, uh, lay people, you know, many people just like you uh, with different titles and different responsibilities. But one of the things I hear so often in just about every church setting is we are so busy and we only have a few limited volunteers. What can CPH do to make my job easier? Well, I think we've got a great resource here and I'm excited to share it with you. And so today's webinar, we're gonna look at it from 30,000 feet. I mean, we're gonna take a big overview, but what are we gonna talk about today? Well, as Peter mentioned, Church 360 Members focuses directly on your people. And that's why we call it members. Uh, so we're gonna focus on a very important aspect of your membership, and that's the budgeting and the sustainability of your church through offerings. Uh, we're not gonna get into any big financial aspect of this in the reporting of it or anything like that. We'll say that for Ledger. And we do have some Ledger webinars coming up. So if you are one of our financial people on watching today, be looking for some uh, future webinars on Ledger as well. But really, I just wanna show you how easy it is to enter this information. And you know, this is such a great tool to kind of keep everything in one place so that we don't lose things in the shuffle. And Peter and the CTS team, Contorted Technology Solution, have been working on this software for years. They know this like the back of their hand. Admittedly, this is a software that I don't use every day. Uh, but that's one of the reasons why I like to share it with you, because it is so easy to use and so intuitive to pick up that if I can do it, you can do it, certainly. So I'm an elder at my church. And for me, that's a privilege to be working in the church and to be working along my pastors, alongside my pastors and praying for the members and things like that. You know, but my role is much easier compared to the staff. And you know, one of the things that having Church 360 members allows me to do is help lighten their load. Uh, and if you are a staff member and you're providing some of the roles and the responsibilities to different people within your congregation, Church 360 members can lighten that load of your day-to-day -day work, which allows you to do other types of ministry and other things. It allows me to update records and information for my new members, uh, you know, I do everything on my phone here. So when I'm in my new member class with uh, people, I can update things. And then that's fed into our Church 360 members. But keeping offerings can be stressful. And as I said, we keep getting asked, what can we do to make it less stressful, make it easier for us? Um, I'm going to show you today just how we can do it. And Peter mentioned earlier, and we'll, you'll hear this a couple different times. These are building blocks, not blueprints. You can customize things for as you need it within your congregation. And we're not gonna be able to cover everything in our time here today. But if we do have time, I do wanna show some of the other reporting and specifically some of the things what you can do to assign roles and different users. Also, one last point. Uh, I used to work in market research. I worked in market research for about eight and a half years. And Peter alluded to this in his introduction, and it is so true. When I would be out presenting research to my clients, I would always remind them be, that behind every data point is a person. And within the church, we can't forget that either. Our church is made up of people. And Church 360 members is just a tool, a very easy tool to use, but a tool uh, to help you build relationships with your members. And I'll show you how we can do that and some of the input of data that we're able to do. So admittedly, this is a lot to cover. So let me just switch over now to my screen. And I'm going to show my screen here, and I want to be sure that everybody's seeing it. I'm looking at it here. I want to see. Okay. So if anybody's having difficulty seeing the screen, put that into the chat and let, uh, let us know. But I'm seeing it here, so I'm hoping that you're seeing it as well. So after you log into Church360 members, this is your opening screen. This is our default screen, the, the people view. Because everything revolves around people, this is where we start with. And I'll show you how you could even change this if, if for you it would be better to go straight to offerings or something else. 
But before we get too deep into the offerings or anything like that, let me just kind of walk through some of the navigation real quick so you can get a sense of where everything lays out. On the left side of your web browser, uh, you see right here is an opportunity to go in and you can change uh, a logo. You can put a picture in here. It's very simple to do. We'll put picture in when we talk about adding a new member. But uh, this is just a nice little feature that you can keep your church's logo in there. Then as you start looking across, you see people, you see events, you see attendance, offerings, and reports. And we'll get into each of those tabs later. Uh, but it's just as you go straight across, there's where you go. I'm going to keep going across now, and I'm over to the right side. Uh, but the reason we put those tabs there is, is that's primarily where you're going to be. Uh, so they're just easy to get to every time. On the right side, you see a couple different things. You see this message bell. And if you scroll on here, if there were any messages or updates or things you needed to address, you'd get a notification there. The next thing you see is the gear wheel or the settings. If I click down on that, you see a collection of many different uh, settings areas for you right there, calendars, church registers, envelopes, uh, funds, pastoral visits, et cetera, as you go down. And then you see some administrative aspects, our general settings, our logins, uh, our roles. Two big things right here, and one we'll touch on today is Banco integration and texting. So we'll talk a little bit about Banco and, and how you can integrate some of your electronic payment systems into this. Uh, and then you see event log. One of the great things with Church 360, the entire suite, there's, there's always an event log there so that you can click into it and just see what all the different things happened and what is going on. So I'm going to click back into this. In fact, I'm just going to click back into my people right there. Because the last thing I want to do is go over to this uh, drop down right here. This is our personal, uh, our, our personal settings. So it shows your profile, your user settings, and your logout. Now, I did just mention that this is the default screen. If you go into user settings, you see down here at the bottom, default view. Now we start with people, but again, if you're on the finance side of this and you really want to key on offerings and just go straight to that screen every single time, you can then change that to uh, offerings. So I'm just going to keep that there. All of this is pretty self-explanatory and easy to navigate. So what we're really here for is the people section. And should I, so I want to kind of get into some of that as well and some of the navigation here. On the opening screen, you see people and you see drop down here. You can go individuals. You can do households. Again, if you're a finance person, you might be interested in the givers section. And then you can do things like marriages and uh, different aspects of that regard. We'll also go into how to add somebody. We'll do that a little bit later. But having this right off the top is a great way to kind of build community and start building those relationships. You notice this filter bar right here underneath uh, people. There's a couple different ways that I can easily find somebody. I can just type in uh, Jones and it'll pop up people whose names are Jones or might have uh, Jones in their information. Uh, it could be a street view or something of that nature. I can also go in and say 63126. It can pull somebody's uh, zip code address or things like that. It's just a great way to pull things up right at your fingertip. Very easy. All you have to do is start typing a few letters. Let's move over to the right side of this as well. Now you see a couple different things. You notice upload. I'm going to click on that. And this is where we can import data and upload data. And we can do it one of two ways, one through a V card or through your Shepherd Staff database. As Peter mentioned, if you need help making that transition with that, you can contact our support people. They'd be happy to help you with that. The next thing you see here is download. And if you click on that, you see that we can export things like uh, as a CSV file or an Excel file, uh, you know, maybe, you know, I love to see a customized database. You know, data is truly only as good as how you can use it. So here is where you can download customized data. Uh, it might be maybe you need to download an electronic uh, form for attendance or the financial records for your elders or your deacons, or maybe you're the pastor and you want to get a list of your new members or you know, be able to put faces with names and things like that. Here's where you can do this. Or, or maybe let's say you're sending out a mailing to the women's Bible study. Here's where you'd be able to do that. So you can look at contribution statements, directory, mailing labels, et cetera. It's just, it's just a great, easy way to get that information into your hands and then be able to share it with others. 
still on the right you see print um, this is perfect if you just want to pull up an individual record or maybe show what's on your screen just click into that uh, it opens up a new window it'll show you what you know, I'm looking at here as far as the print is concerned uh, it's taking just a second here but I've just pulled up all my individuals and my names and things of that nature so you see that and then you can print that out maybe save it as a pdf and share it with others as well so i'm just going to click out of that and go back to my tab and then the last thing you see here is an opportunity to uh, customize and save some reports so we won't go too deep into this but again if you were doing some reporting you can then save it right here with a title and a name that you give it and then the last important section in this area is just right underneath here. You see another drop down menu. When I click into that, uh, this it provides different tags that I've assigned to people. Uh, it has different groups that we've assigned to people. Right now I'm just on everyone, so you see everybody. But let's say I uh, am going, and let's say I just wanna put the elders that are on my, my elder board. Okay, right now I just have Benjamin Jones listed, but if I had different tags for people, I would see different people. Let's see if I've got any for choir. Surely I have some singers. Oh, Ben's in the choir too, so. But this is uh, different groups and different tags that you can provide. I'll show you on tags a little bit later as well. But this is a great feature to be able to take uh, care of everybody right there. This hamburger menu right now, if you click on it, it also provides additional filtering traits. So I can add a trait, like I want to see all those who were uh, age is 16, let's just say. Uh, and let's just see, I can add another trait who are, oh, I don't know, uh, confirmed. So I've got two people right there. I can do different things and then save these as a group. I'm going to click out of there. And then the last thing you see is columns. Oh wait, I'm gonna go back now. See, I've got my customized groups and now I wanna be sure I just click back to everyone. That'll get me back onto my, my main screen. But the last thing I can do is go into columns. You see the check boxes here. I can click out of all of them. Uh, and let's say I just wanna have their address, their age, uh, baptism, dates, um, confirmation, and again just for employee uh, envelope number things of that nature so i can customize my screen and my columns right now so that i can when i'm on my website i'm seeing exactly the information i want again you're going to keep hearing it throughout the course of this conversation building blocks not blueprints or yeah so let me click on everything here there we go all right so those are the navigational tools. And uh, I just now, let's put the software to work. Let's take a quick look at offerings. Let's go straight to offerings and we'll come back and pull some of the other things that Peter talked about as far as adding members and events and things like that. But you know, while it's important to keep track of your members, it's also very important to keep track of your members' ties and givings. And the offering tab allows us just to do that. And it is also very highly customizable. So if you're like me, I'm not an accountant by any means. In fact, I have a hard enough time just balancing my own checkbook. But that's what I love about this. It's so easy to input the data and I love the visual clues that you see. Uh, if you go here to the navigation for offerings, now I've clicked onto the offerings tab. You see offerings, you see new batch, and we'll go through this when we add a new batch. You'll see a date range here. Uh, and I can click into it and change my range as well as I have a sliding scale down here. And we'll go through some of that. I can also filter through some other options as well. I can do you know, showing just the offerings. I can show the summaries by fund. I can show summaries by givers. Again, with different tags that I assign to people, I can look at it from that aspect of it. I've got my hamburger menu here where I can put additional uh, traits to it as well and my columns. So I'm going to click out of there. Come on, I just need to click right there. So you also have different things like download. Again, being able to download this as a CSV or an Excel file. You have the opportunity to print here. This is kind of neat. I can compare and we can talk about different things. I can look at trends. Uh, I can compare into months, you know, different things here and there. So we'll, we'll get into some of these as we move along. Again, I'm just doing this very high level. 
uh, but I wanted to show the different things that we have for you. So how can I customize this? There are so many different ways to customize, and I even kind of alluded to some of those already. Uh, under the drop-down menu, I can click in here, and let's say I just want to see uh, this year. So I'm going to start on January 1 to where I am right now. You notice when I do that, and I can also do it here with these sliding bars, you notice now how all the information below has changed as well. So I've got that. I mentioned the sliding bar. You see this on each side. Let's say I just want to go to March 1 through, uh, let's see, end of, end of April, May 1. Again, notice how everything changes underneath that. So we've got a lot of other drop-down opportunities, again, through this drop-down menu, by fun giver, uh, things like this. Or this is kind of nice, too. I can actually click into a specific name and go into there and just see that specific giver's information and see what the individual has done there as well. Now, I'm going to click off of this because now it's filtering that way. I'm going to back here as well. I'm at March. I'm just going to drag this just so we have current uh, from the last few months. All right. So having all of this information at your fingertips is just invaluable. I mean, think of its huge time saving that this is for you. You know, imagine how convenient it would be for you or your pastor or, you know, the finance committee, if you have others working with you, to be able to just kind of quickly go in and locate this information. And I love being able to see it visually. Uh, I'm a visual learner and I like to see things. So you can look at things and say, okay, we're having a deficit in this area, or maybe we're having an excess in this area. Maybe this is the messaging that we need to provide to be sure that we can pick up that excess or that deficit. Uh, what it allows you to do is just have quicker decisions all the way around. So how do I add offerings? Okay. And I'm going to show you this later in people, but just like people, there's a button right here. So this one says new batch, and I'm going to click into that. I'm going to click into the new batch off, or new batch for that. It now pops up a window that gives me a date. Um, we've just got to pick a, a date for our offering entry. And keep in mind, you can't add information uh, like this for a future event. You can't add offerings for a future event because you haven't taken that uh, offering yet. So I'm going to click right into it. Again, it pops up on the calendar or I can type it in directly. I'm going to go over here. Well, hard to believe, first of all, it's already July. So I'm going to go over here and I want to pick up uh, May the 24th. Now, actually, I'll tell you what, I think I did May 24th. Let me, let me pick up June the 7th. Okay, I'm going to click out of that. Now you see three different options for me. And you may not see three every time, but you always see no event or one of the services that you designated. So let's click on worship with communion at 8 a.m. And I'll touch base on some of this later too as we talk about events and how to make sure you uh, put that information in there so we can add the offerings. But now all I do is click add. And we'll start putting some in, but think about this. I mean, we've just come through a strange and very difficult few months. You know, it's possible right now that your offerings are down as a congregation. I hope not. I pray not. Uh, maybe you've already moved to electronic giving, and uh, or maybe you've been doing that for some time. Our Church 360 members integrates with Vanco uh, and, and to seamlessly bring those electronic gifts in. And we'll talk a little bit about that at the end today. Uh, but I want to also share that Peter and CTS has done a number of very good, very solid training videos for integrating uh, electronic giving into your uh, into your church and everything of that nature and the benefits of it. So I would recommend that they're on our CTS website, Concordia Technology Solution, if you have any questions on that. Let's go in and start putting some offerings in. And I'll just show you how quick and how easy this is. So when I clicked on that drop-down box, we have now Worship with Communion 8 a.m. Uh, for June the, the 7th. The first thing you see is another drop-down menu here that starts with loose offerings. And then it lists all the different members that you have in your congregation. You know, you'll see a few of these have uh, numbers behind their name. That's their envelope number. And again, this is some of that data entry you may need to be sure that you're following up with and keeping track of uh, when envelopes come up. But all of that information is there. So let's just do this. Let's just start with loose offerings just to get something going here. 
Then you see payment type, and there are four different options here for you. There's cash, there's check, there's electronic, or there's gift in kind. And we just designate that with a truck. It can be any different types of gift in kind. But on each of these two, if I click into it, you see numbers that raise at the top there. This is just a simplicity of doing entry. I can either click on them directly or I can just click the number and it will go over to whatever that is. And you see the difference when that does that. So I'm gonna say check. Well, first of all, I'm gonna go loose offering. So let's just do cash. So then I can just tab over and then I get the option of all my different funds. And some of these I've uh, designated and I've put in as a tag or whatever, but you also see the numbers behind those. I can type that in real quick too. Now, some of that, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about this in Ledger, but we actually watched and talked with people on how they like to do data entry. And some of these number keys, it was just so much easier and faster for people to be able to do it with their number pad rather than have to keep moving the mouse around. Again, it's a preference for you. It's whatever you like and can move around with easier. So let's just go into general fund. And then we've got our amount. And this is where we just type in that amount. Um, let's say we had $362.38 was just loose offerings. And then you have a memo line, and this is optional. You don't have to put the memo in there, but just to say loose uh, cash in offering plate. Tab that. I can then go down, I'll show you this in a minute, or I can just hit enter. Let me get in back into there. Let me just hit enter. You see on the right side, it says save. You see in the middle, the fund is highlighted there and it then drops me down to another name that I can add. So let's do this for a few other people in the congregation. Again, there are a couple different options here. You can either scroll down, you know, move your cursor. Uh, I can go in here, let's go back to Jones. Let's go back to Ben Jones. I can type in a name and it'll pop up. So I'm gonna hit Ben Jones. Uh, ben wrote a check, I'm gonna go over to check. He wrote a check and this is another option too. You can either add the number of the check if uh, that's more convenient for you or if that helps your reporting back to your congregation. So it was check number uh, 256 out of his checkbook. He wanted to go into general fund. He wrote a check for $150. I'm gonna go no memo, but I'm gonna tab and I will show you how you can add additional things. But let's say he also then, his check, he sent a separate, another check, or within that same check, he designated more funds for, let's say, uh, education. And then he added an additional $75 for that. And then I'm gonna type in here, uh, new Sunday school materials. He did that, then I'm just gonna hit enter. Now I see Ben Jones now has two different records in there with his check and it adds it up and continues to just run a running total. I'm gonna to do this just real quick, a few others, Dave and Susie Abbott, uh, then another check. I'm not gonna worry about the check number. They wrote a check for $300. I'm just gonna, oh, I'm sorry, it was going too fast there. There's no 300, but if I did uh, eight, it's men's ministry. So he wrote a check for men's ministry for $50. Uh, I could either do one of two things. I could add another line for them, or I can go out, well, I'll show you how to add a line. I will edit them. Sally Baxter, uh, she had electronic payment. She wasn't doing men's ministry. She back back to general fund. Uh, she did $200. Again, I can put something in. Let's go back real quick and show you a second line. So all I did here, let me make sure you picked up on that, is I clicked into Dave and Susan Abbott, men's ministry. I wanted to add a second line, very much like I did for Ben Jones. So they also put in for the general fund uh, an amount of $75. Click into that and that's added as well. So I've gone through that pretty quick, but really that's all there is to that. It's just so simple to go through and do it. If I wanted to click out of here and go back into offerings, you see now that uh, I'm a little low on all my offerings here, but you see the date that I have right there. In fact, I'll move this over. June 7th, those are the uh, the offerings that I just inputted. And I can click through there. And again, I can go through, I can look at uh, another designated time frame. Uh, but let's just 
again, just for grins, just kind of pull that out. And I was going to look for the Abbots real quick, but uh, all right, I'm not going to I'm not going to spend time doing that. But the other thing that's great about this, then, as you add additional offerings, let's say I want to do another batch. I click on my date. I'm going to go back to June 7th. I now want to put in the 10:30. I can do 10:30 worship. Same thing. It adds up. I got my loose cash, general fund. Let's say we had $250 in loose funds. Uh, let's just say we scroll down. Brian and Molly Chung. Oop. Brian and Molly Chung. They had a check general fund of uh, $150. On and on and on. And then it would be the same. And then that allows me to download it again as a CSV or as an Excel or to print that. Okay, I'm going to click out of there. I just love that you know there's so much flexibility in this and it's so easy to do and it's also then very reportable and here's the thing though you can't have and i want to check my time we can't have offerings if there aren't members or events for your members to go to so let's take a quick look at how easy it is to add a member uh, again if there are any questions or if there's anything that i've sparked an idea or i've missed something for you by going over this too quick please ask us but the offerings that really is about as easy as it is just to go in put the numbers tell what it is the memo the amount hit enter and it just adds everything up and if you had a whole stack of checks and loose cash uh, you could probably get through that pretty quickly by doing it this way but how do we set up members so let me go back to people and i want to walk through how to set up a member and let's say we want to new member has come into our congregation we want to keep track of their donations their tithing uh, we just go to people individuals or i could go family households either way and click new just like we did new batch we're going to click new here and let's say okay let, we're talking offerings today let's just think of a name um gates yeah the gates house Whoop, i've got my cat lock key on sorry about that gates so the Gates family and William, William Gates. I tab over, he's male, I click there. Uh, he is a member, so I click yes there. And then I can click add or I can click add or edit. Let's just click add and edit and just go straight to that. It now brings me to the Gates household. So I'm just going to go into here. Well, let me show a couple different things. Let's give an address, so I just click into address uh and he lives at northeast uh, 18th street uh, medina oh, i can click that whoop 18th street tap down and he lives in medina washington zip is uh what 98039 and there his address pops up and uh I love this feature too. I will talk about this about this a little bit later. But when you put the address in, oh, it looks like he's got a nice house. When you put the address in, it connects to Google Maps. And I love this, especially as an elder, when I'm doing visits and calls, being able to see it on the uh, on your phone right there. Let's say I uh, put phone number in there. Let's say his email address is. Oh, he's kind of old school, so he's Bill at CompuServe. Serve dot dot net got that all right now if i click straight into the, our member here and i click into their name so i've got everything transferred over here and so you see the address you know, if i put a phone number in there that would be there the email address i can do history and things like this let's show you how quick and easy it is to just add a picture so all i do is i click into the gray box where it says picture this is the same if you were changing your logo and let's say i want to upload a picture I love being able to put faces with names. Uh, let's see, I've got his picture over here. I love doing that because again, I'm very visual. I need to be able to see who our members are. Oh, there he is. So his picture has come right up and I could either crop it if I wanted to change where how I view it. Very easy to do. I can expand out, I can squeeze in. Let's just say crop. It's saving it right now for me and I'm just gonna hit close. So right off the bat, I've got a picture of my new member in there. 
and there's a lot of information you can put in here a lot of information and you can customize it and i love this as well if i had other family members here's where i could add the family members or through the household uh, we talked about tags a little bit um, here is where we can add those tags and this comes in very handy because you can really then uh, segment your different members and, and like we talked about with offerings and different things like this but let's see let's see tags let's say bill uh he really does enjoy a bible study so he's involved in our men's bible study you can click on that right off the bat uh here's something new we've added a church technology team so i'm just going to type that in and i'm going to make that a tag right there and there are a couple different ways to make tags and i'm not going to get into that today but right off the bat i've got the church technology team together and he's a part of it uh, you can also do things like hobbies and such. Uh, he's interested in running. Uh, maybe he uh, enjoys golf. And there's just a lot of great ways to keep that information handy. So let's just see here. The other thing you can do, you can add their ethnicity. Uh, the, again, none of this is required and you can change the way you put some of this in there. But for a lot of people in reporting particularly, it's helpful just to get a sense of that. Uh, those white Caucasian, you can put a birth date in here. And that's kind of nice too, because then you can keep track of people's birthdays and things of that nature. So I don't know, Bill was born in, you know, let's say he was born in 1952, let's say. If they're baptized, you can make note of that, confirmation dates, et cetera. Occupation, philanthropist. Oops. If I spelled that correctly. All right, and then you can do different things. Here's some great information too for the finance side of this. You can add the envelope number as well. So uh, here, when I click into envelope number, there are seven different giving units scheduled to have different numbers in January 2nd, 2021. We keep track of those things for you. Uh, you can enter scheduled renumbering or edit that scheduled renumbering. I can automatically add a uh, different number here. So let's just put in uh, his envelope numbers are 256. So let's just see if I can do that. Renumber. Okay, so this is where you put their numbers in, etc. And let's just see how we're doing there. So we've got a few more minutes. I want to go through a couple more things. So there's Bill Gates. Oh, he does look familiar. Maybe he'll be able to provide some of our offerings to us. What I was saying before with, uh, I love the map because having it uh, attached to the Google Maps you can see right off the bat where your people live. You might, especially if you're an elder, uh, be able to see where the easiest ways to drive around and do home visits are if you're a pastor making home visits or things like this, or maybe you just need to run by and pick up that offering. I'm not sure. All right. So very, very easy to add new members. We do a number of different webinars where we do an overview where we get deeper into adding new members and adding tags and things of this nature. Before too much time passes, let's look at events because you have to have members and you have to have events. So I'm gonna click into events and you see a calendar come up. Uh, it's so easy to add events and worship services and special events and keep track of birthdays and things like this. Quick navigation uh, up here, you see today's date. You can go the month of behind, May 2020, or you can go into the month ahead, uh, July, but we're still on this week where it's still showing June but I can just click back here and go to today. So I'm gonna do that, June 2nd. We can show a month view, we can show a week's view. Uh, we can change different calendars that we want to have on here. You know, again, maybe for the finance team, you wanna put a date where it's, you know, different teams that you might have that are counting and inputting the money and things of that nature. And you wanna develop a schedule for them so you could do that and then just show that one particular calendar. Same type of thing as the other uh, calendars and the other views as well. You can click off of everything and then click into individuals or just click into all. You can download it. Uh, again, you can export this now as a Microsoft Word document, very handy, or you can print it. So let's add an event, and I wanna show you how simple that is. I wanna go back to my month view. 
And so you see the events I already have in here, but let's say we've got a uh, Saturday worship services. There are two ways to do this. You can either click directly into the date or you can go to the top, cancel that real quick. You go to the top where it says new and then select the date. So I'm gonna cancel all that. I'm just gonna go right into a date. So I'm gonna to go to the 18th. Uh, this opens up the window and all we've gotta do is provide a title. So we're gonna say this is uh, Saturday worship service. And then I can add it to a particular calendar worship. So I'm gonna add it to that. Again, I'm just, this. these are tags that I've already put in there. Add location, this is in the uh, sanctuary. So I'm gonna click into that. It's not all day. If I clicked on there, it would be, but it's gonna be from uh, six, now let's make this five. 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. I could set to repeats, et cetera. But here is the important thing. You see three different options here. Uh, attendance taken, communion served, or offering taken. And don't forget this step. So if you're, if you're building in an event and you want to take attendance for one and you're serving communion, you can click in that box as well. And if you're taking offering at these events, click into it so that it's added so that when you then go into offering and you are looking for the date and the events that it has, you can go straight into that. I'm gonna hit click to add and uh, that's really all there is to that. So you see now my my Saturday worship service. What I should have done, let me just go back. I was gonna say I should have put it in a date behind so that we could have gone in and, and done it. But I think you get the the idea here that it's very easy to add it. The key is to make sure you're clicking offerings. That way you'll be able to find that at a different time. So again, these are just building blocks and they're building blocks to provide insights for you to get to understand your, your budgets to get to understand the uh, worship habits of your members, to get to understand uh, different birthdays and, and events and things that you've got going on within your church. Uh, there are so many building blocks. And Peter and I encourage you to, to just go in and start playing around and start working on things. Uh, you know, search different things, uh, try different things. You're not gonna break it by any means. There's also always a, a safety here for you. You notice down at the very bottom right corner of your web page, there's a circle I. If I click into that circle I, and this is on every single screen you're gonna see, it is information, it stands for information. And you can type in a, a question that you might have, you know, how do I do this or looking for this? or there might be suggested articles depending upon where you are. On this, it's events overview or adding a new event, or you can always send us a message. So you can type in your message, the headline, please provide as much detail as possible when you send it to us so that we understand and can help answer your question correctly the first time. Uh, but you can also call us. If you're still having questions and, and you still don't understand, or you still need help with something, call us at 800-346, 6120. We are here to help. I, I talk about this all the time. I mean, there's nothing more frustrating than having to use new software and getting that learning curve. You know, we are here to help you with this. We built this for the churches. We talked to the churches. We got a lot of great input from the churches. And we want to make this as easy and successful for you as it possibly can. Um, so give us ideas. Try it out. Try to break it. You won't be able to break it but give us some ideas and let us know how it's working for you. Last thing, I wanna wrap up very quickly, and we've got a couple minutes here, but I wanna talk about integrating with Vanco. Church 360 members integrates with Vanco payment solutions, different programs like a Joyful Response or Simply Giving or Give Plus. And that handles the actual online giving. And we're able to sync that information into our system. We don't handle the actual payment processing, however. Uh, so you'll need to sign into your Vanco account uh, and then go to Vanco integration. So I've got a couple different tabs that I've already opened up here. So you have your Vanco account if you are using Vanco right now. Sign into your Vanco account, that way their servers are connected. And then, and I'm just using a different account right now, a different staging account. But you go over here to the gears. And I showed this earlier, uh, where under admin, you go Vanco integration, clicks it up here, 
you have brought your Vanco client ID and your user ID and your password in there. It shows that it's active. I'm gonna click on it. All I've gotta do is just say sync now. I sync into it. I'm gonna go back over to offering. It shows right there that I've successfully synced. So I'm clicking into there and it shows me all my different electronic funds that come in. And it's really that easy, but like I said, there's so much, there's more training involved and we have a lot of this online. So if you're trying to integrate your electronic payments, by all means, please check with us and ask some questions. We'll see what we can do. But you know, why is e-giving so popular? Well, you know, I think if there's, if there's one thing that we saw during this entire shutdown and the, the shelter in place, it's certainly more difficult to collect offerings if the offering plate isn't being passed. Um, E-giving kind of gives us this, uh, provides more convenience. You know, it just, it's automatic. It's deposited directly into your accounts. You don't have to worry about it. For a lot of people, it provides stronger stewardship uh, commitments. You know, you don't fall behind because it's again, automatically and it's taking it out. It's consistent donations. You know, it's easier to tithe for many people. Uh, even when they're away. And that consistency uh, helps provide better planning for the church. Uh, you know, you can improve your forecasting of where you're going to be and what your needs are going to be down the road. It's certainly more secure, you know, reduces handling uh, of the cash and the checks and the input of the data and the, the risk of making mistakes with some of that. And it's less to process. And while Church 360 members makes it very, very easy to input this data, uh, and the offerings as we've seen, the e-giving uh, makes it even easier. And when, when you can have a little bit more efficient use of your time, that allows you to do more things and different things with your ministry. One last thing, and I know we're, we're hitting it on time and I hope there's some good questions and Peter can go, but I wanna show you real quick roles and permissions, because uh, this is huge. And it, as I said, we show a lot of different information here. I'm going to go back into this one. We show a lot of different information, a lot of different ways to customize it. But roles and permission is very important. And a lot of the information you're putting in here could be very sensitive. And offerings are something very sensitive in that nature. Being unlimited, though, in the number of people that you can provide to roles and uh, permissions and things like this allows for tremendous flexibility. Uh, it allows you to connect with people who have that specific skill set that can do some work for you on things within your church. The volunteers that may be underutilized right now, you can help them get involved in different things by giving them a role and permission. We go to the gearbox, that wheel. We click down, we go to roles. So I'm scrolling all the way down. It's right before Vanco integration and right before text. Click on that, and we always recommend that you do roles by what their actual job is, not by what their names are, things like this, whether it's a paid position, a volunteer position, whatever. Uh, it's just about any certain task that they're working on. So here's one, I mean, here show the different people, like our elders, uh, I added finance team, so we've got administrators here. So I'm gonna click in the finance team. So let's say I've got a number of people within my finance team that I want to be working on this back end and have access to this particular thing. I click into there, I can grant them different permissions. They can see people's information or not. They can edit people's profiles and households or not. Uh, I want them to see my events. I want them to be able to review attendance per se, but here's where I want my finance team to have access. I want them to be able to enter offerings. I want them to be able to review offerings uh, I don't necessarily want them to see individual contribution details. You know, I might save that for myself or others, uh, but I want them to be able to manage uh, envelopes or manage the funds. Again, this is just check boxes. You hit save, and that provides the different roles and responsibilities, which again, allow you to be freed up to do other ministries within the church. So I'm wrapping it up. That was a lot of information I know, uh, but we just began to scratch the surface. Now, we do a lot of different webinars like this, and we appreciate it when you're getting those emails and you're, if you're interested to uh, sign up for them. If it might not be you, please forward it to somebody you know within your congregation that could use it. And so look for different announcements. We've got a couple of different webinars next week, uh, Unite and Ledger. So we'll be doing this again. So again, I wanna thank you for attending. Uh, I know we're right up on time. I hope we can extend it a little bit to take some questions and answers. Uh, but if we can be of any further help, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. 
uh, I always say this, it kind of sounds corny, but Concordia Technology Solutions. Solutions is in our name. We're here to help you and we're here to answer any questions you might have. And with that, I'm gonna hand it back over to Peter and see if there are questions or see if there's anything that, uh, maybe some ideas that we sparked and that you can ad address, Peter. We've got a few questions in there, but before I get to that, let me remind everybody, if you haven't already started a free 30-day trial of 360 members, you can do that at 360members.com. That 30-day free trial will give you access to everything. The only limit is that time period. So I encourage you to do that if you haven't already. Uh, we often get questions about pricing. Um, I know often with software, it can kind of be like, well, call us for a quote. And we like to be very transparent about our pricing. And so it's on our website, it's right here in front of you as well. We do pricing based on member households, meaning the number of households with at least one member in it. We don't wanna penalize any church for doing a good job of tracking visitors, tracking family members who come from time to time. We think there's value in that data, but we do have to scale our prices based on church size. So we thought, thought this was a really good, happy kind of in the middle ground where it's based on the size of the number of members you have, theoretically the numbers of members who are contributing. So we have that here. The one line at the bottom is that there is a 199 startup fee that we require for all accounts. And right now, during the month of July, if you sign up, we are going to take, oh, oops, I went too far. Hang on one second. We're gonna take $100 off that startup fee. And so it'll only be the $99. Now that startup fee not only provides the initial setup and everything and working with our team to get up and running and the onboarding training that comes with it. That's the key part is that you'll work with an individual one-on-one -on -one to get the training for your church. Um, it'll be just you and them. You're not going to be sitting there with other churches. You'll be able to converse with them unlike today where it's just a, kind of your microphone's muted and we're the ones who are talking. So again, if you sign up before the end of July, um, you'll get that $100 off. Make sure that when you're talking with our team, you mentioned that you were here at this webinar and heard that offer. Now, the way to get started is to reach out to our software consultants. If you start a free trial, they'll end up reaching out with you. You can also contact me at my email there and I'll put you in touch with the right person. Either way is just fine. Um, but we love to have those conversations and see if it's a good fit because it's not a good fit for everybody. Depending on your needs, what you have may be right or Church 360 members might be right. And actually that's a really good way to lead us into our first question. Um, we had a question from Robert who said he came in late, but what is the benefit over shepherd staff? What is the benefit of Church 360 members over shepherd staff? Well, the key difference I'll say is that it's online. You can access it anywhere with an internet connection. Now with Shepherd Staff, if you're not familiar with that, and I know Robert is, but for those other ones, Shepherd Staff is our PC-based church management software. And it's been around since 1994. We are actively developing it. In fact, we're rewriting each module to be the latest technology. So that's gonna be around for years to come, just like Church 360. We have two great solutions that solve two very different needs. Some churches prefer to have their data on their servers in their location, and others prefer to have it online in the cloud. And so we've made two different options utilizing the best of both technologies. So PC-based softwares like Shepherd Staff utilize the best Windows technology, and a web-based software like Church360 we utilize the best web practices. So you'll see that the user interface looks different. The way navigation works looks different. So we make them rather different because of where they're located and what we can do with those things. So that's the main difference, but it leads to all these other little differences. So things like tags make much more sense online because of the type of database we use. And so it allows you to quickly and easily group people, use smart groups, dynamically create it, all relying on our servers and our processing speeds and just displaying that information. Whereas Shepherd Staff, we have to utilize different database practices, different programming practices to display the information. And it works well for both. So those are the main differences. I could get more technical. Um, it's easier to show them side by side, and we do have a comparison on our website if you're interested. Peter, one of the other big differences, though, too, because they're on a cloud and they're web-based, it's Mac or PC. Thank you. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Any device with an internet connection, whereas Shepherd Staff is really just your PC. We've had people run in parallels and all of that. It doesn't work nearly as well as using a PC. So yeah, that was a key thing. Thank you for bringing that up. 
because we had a lot of Mac users who are like, when are you going to make a Shepherd staff for Mac? Well, well, we're not. We've got an online solution. That way it doesn't matter if you're using a Mac or a PC, you can access it. So thanks for bringing that up, Ken. Um, Joan had a question. Um, they're kind of related. Uh, two questions, actually. The first one was, how or what do you balance to? And this is referring to offerings. And then uh, she also said, what is your offset? Now, I took those to mean two different things. What are you balancing to? Um, usually, what I've seen, and when we went and visited with churches, it was the same story everywhere. The way it works is you collect the offerings in your offering plate. You typically bring them and, and either put them in a safe or give them to the tellers. If they're in the safe, then the tellers will come in on a Monday morning or something like that. But what you do is you actually just count it all up and you put your totals in there and you sit on a piece of paper and say, okay, we have X amount in cash, X amount in checks. And then when you go and enter it, you've got your totals at the very bottom of your batch and you match it up with your, uh, with your list. I worked in retail for a number of years. I used to work in the grocery stores where we'd have like 12 different registers. That's exactly what we do. We'd count it first, then we'd go into the computer and make sure that it matched. So that's what you balance to when you do offerings. Now, the other thing she asks is, what is your offset? Now, that's a, a you could say, well, what's your, what do you balance to in your offset? I think she's what you're saying, Joan, and if you're still on, you can clarify if I'm getting this wrong. But typically, the offset means the other account. So when you are making a deposit in the bank, you know, you're writing your deposits, putting it in there. But when you're tracking it on your financial system, you've got your deposit, which is going into the bank. You'll have an income account and an asset account. Now, that's getting into the Church 360 ledger territory. We're going to be talking about that next week. Within Church 360 members, all you're really caring to do is track those offerings and assign them to people so that you can give them their contribution statement at the end of the year. So that's a little bit different than what we're talking about today by getting into offsets. So I'm hoping I'm understanding that correctly, and I, I hope it's not just kicking the can down the road to next week, but that is a different software that we're not going to show today. So um, there's a connection. Your batches in Church 360 members will flow over to Church 360 Ledger. So all your totals are there, split up by fund. Makes it really easy to make that transaction. Um, Robert also asked, what is the, what the security setup? Um, that's a, obviously a complicated question. We can't go into too many details in the time that we have. But what I'll say is that we utilize the same security that banks utilize meaning all of the different encryption levels, the SSL certification is a, you know, just a standard. But on our servers, we don't have our servers here in the building. We utilize third parties that are the top servers. We go through an Amazon web servers, which is what all the big companies use to keep their things secure. Um, there's a lot of redundancy in there, so we never have to worry about a server failure and losing anything. Um, it's very efficient. Um, that's one of the reasons why we use these bigger servers so that we can always scale appropriately. And we've got a, a security information that we can share that just talks about the different practices that our third parties utilize in terms of making sure nobody has access to it. We do a lot of security in-house. So even though our support team can access your account, they can't view private records. That is encrypted at a database level, and you have to be signed in from your natural account, not from a, an administrator account at CTS. So we look at it from a variety of different levels, from a data standpoint, from a server standpoint, from an internal standpoint, um, doing the best that we can possibly think of. And again, we're following the best practices in the banking industry, even though there's not that same kind of information here. Sure, we have contributions, but we don't have bank accounts. We don't have social security numbers, anything like that. It's just the totals. So we try to go probably above and beyond where we need to be. All right. And then um, Robert also says, did the calendar integrate with my website? That's pointing to a different software, Church 360 Unite, which we'll be talking about on Monday. And the answer is yes, yes, it does. If you're utilizing our church website platform, the events are all on one central calendar. And if you make a change in Unite or you make a change in members, it all syncs together perfectly. So the same event that you're taking attendance on and the same event that you're adding offerings to will be visible on your website and your members can sign up for it there. So it all works really nicely together. All right. Um, Joan did respond and then she had to leave. She said, thanks. Uh, you make a balance sheet. Got it. <laughs> it's not any more complicated than that, but I can see why you asked the question to make sure you got it right. Because sometimes these financial things, 
seem more complicated than they really are. All right, I think that is the last question. We are definitely over time, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up. Thank you everyone who came today and thank you for staying with us to the bitter end. I hope you had a, an enjoyable time, you learned a lot, and now I hope you have a great holiday weekend. We'll see you at the next webinar. Thanks again, Ken, for presenting. I really appreciate it. I look forward to presenting with you next week. We'll see you later. Thanks. Bye-bye.